This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Thursday, January 13th, wherever and however you're connected. Wonderful to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who has his BYU alumni run-ins at places like Wendy's and McDonald's, not so much Ruth's Chris. Okay, so... Last night, Hemahe Mooley, who's a producer here, he tweeted about, you know, running into Robert Parker. Robert Parker was a running back in the 80s. Robert Parker is an awesome dude. So just a little bit of a flex from Hema, because look where he is. He's at Roots Grit, okay? <laughs> okay? You know, he's, he's like, my mom and dad loved Twilight BYU. My dad's uh, best man was Tom uh, Tupelotu. Mom's maid of honor was Robert Parker. So that's fun, right? Robert Parker. I, Hema, I also found myself encountering the amazing Robert Parker. At Wendy's in Salt Lake last <laughs> summer, okay? Robert Parker's the man! Robert Parker was awesome. He was so cool. I'd never met him. He was great. Um, I believe it works at Roots, Chris, uh, and is a uh, kind of a youth pastor, I believe. Why have we not utilized this connection yet, Jerem? I don't know! I've never actually been to Roots, Chris. Fun fact. Uh, I'm too poor, but they don't let me in. Maybe but, uh... Robert Parker is the <laughs> discount connection that we need to get into Roots, Chris. Hi, uh, I'd like a discount. Uh, no, so that I just thought it was super funny. I was like, hey, I had the same experience at Wendy's. <laughs> no, Robert Parker's the man, dude. Hey, Wendy's is great because you could utilize Absolutely. your two-for-one coupon there and still meet Robert Parker and experience how awesome my he is. One coupon. Right? <laughs> I'm not really a coupon guy. Uh, when I was little, my mom was definitely a coupon. Are you app guy? Are you app deal guy? Not, because I totally no, am. I'm no, app I, deal no, guy. No, I know you are. You're, you're good. If we go somewhere, you're like, oh, I have a rewards thing here. Yeah. That's how we roll, baby. <laughs> yeah, and then like a year later, you get like a free six-inch whatever. I was like, was it even worth Hashtag it? Hashtag BYU budget. That was $4. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully more Wendy's talk or not on the show lineup. But and more Robert Parker talk. Yeah, you Rob, know? Robert Parker's fantastic. I told him to come down and hang out with us. He yeah. He's an A-list personality he's if you've great. never met him. Great. Also on the A-list, today's guest. Dude, which today's include huge show. Jay Billis, the Billistrator. ESPN college basketball insider and analyst. Like he is the voice of college basketball for ESPN calling BYU at Gonzaga tonight. What does he think of the matchup and what advice would he give to BYU as the Cougars transition into the big 12? Fun combo. Plus Gloria Navarez, West coast conference commissioner will join us. What in the world does her schedule look like as she tries to piece together solidarity and more games through this Second wave, or is it a third wave now, of the COVID pandemic? Year three, if it's a Netflix series. It's called called a third wave. And what's the bigger game this week for BYU men's basketball? Is it tonight at Gonzaga? They're the number two team. They win, they're going to be number one. Well, they got to go through Brigham Young. Or is it BYU at San Francisco? Another huge quad one road game for BYU. We'll discuss. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Men's hoops at number two Gonzaga tonight. Pre-game on BYU Radio at 10 Eastern. The Zags have a 60-game home win streak. I think the last loss to BYU, right? Would be a shame to see that go down. Uh, Alex Barcelo is on the Lute Olsen midseason award watch list for top player in D1. That's ironic considering uh, he played at Arizona. The last time BYU played Gonzaga when they were number two and probably going to be number one, was the epic February game in 2020 when BYU beat the Zags, well. preventing them from getting to that number one spot. 18th-ranked BYU women's basketball hosting St. Mary's tonight, 9 Eastern. You can watch that live on BYU TV. The Cougars taking on Paul Thomas and the Gales, trying to remain perfect in WCC play and, of course, maintain what right now is a five seed in ESPN's women's bracketology. Jayla Gonzalez is the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. She averaged 15.6 rebounds and five assists per game last week. How about this? BYU as an entire athletic program, sits atop the Learfield Directors' Cup standings following the fall season. Wow. Number one. Amazing. Ranking the overall status of your athletic department. Incredible. 368 points for the Cougars. Notre Dame is second, eight points back. Michigan third at 354. BYU, Notre Dame, Michigan, ranking your overall athletic programs in the fall. Soccer, cross country, women's volleyball, repping, right? Track and field host second home meet of the indoor season today through Saturday with Utah State, Pepperdine, Westminster, Dixie State, 
So they're still good. Utah Valley and Southern Utah. How about some Cougars playing across the pond? Jake Toulson in Germany had nine points, three assists, three rebounds, and a loss. But Toulson and BC Gittingen will take on Matt Harms and his team, the Freyport Skyliners, on Saturday. That's kind of a fun BYU connection. Okay. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Bring on the Zags. BYU trying to prevent Gonzaga from becoming the number one team in all the land with what they hope is another upset at the kennel. Mark Pope hasn't done it. Dave Rose and his teams did it three times. Yep. Be a great time to pull that off. Pope was an assistant. This is true. This is true. BYU right now is a 15-point underdog, according to our friends in the desert, and according to Ken Pomeroy, a 12-point underdog. So, Jerem, with those numbers in mind, and knowing that Gonzaga has won like a billion games in a row at home, what are the expectations realistically for BYU at Gonzaga tonight? Win! No. um, Compete. Compete well. Play a single-digit game. Honestly, that's what I want. I want a single-digit game. BYU had it at home. For some reason, kept fouling Gonzaga last year. Otherwise, <laughs> it would have been. And then, obviously, up there was a blowout. And in Vegas, BYU was up 15 and, unfortunately, got away from BYU late in the last four minutes. Um, that was rough. If BYU plays a single-digit game and can compete, that'd be good. Because guess what? The reality is BYU the – re, this is the reality. Let's straight talk here. BYU is overmatched in the front court. In fact, Gonzaga overmatches almost everyone in the front court because Drew Timmy is one of the best, if not the best player in the yes. country. Chet, Chet Holmgren's going to be a top three pick in the NBA draft, seven footer who can shoot the he three. He plays like Kevin Durant. He's he's McLovin with a handle. Okay? He plays like Kevin Durant. Yes, he's the he's white Kevin Durant light, you know, or whatever. It's crazy. Uh, light meaning half of what his skills or something, but. It, it's going to be a tough matchup. Yet, BYU has two sixth-year college guards that hopefully can inject some life, some pace, some energy, some force, as Mark Pope said. Uh-huh. And give BYU a shot here. Trevin now played really well in Vegas, hopefully does tonight. Fusini Treor, Atik Ali Atiki's got to really bring it. And hopefully BYU can be in the mix late and make it interesting. To expect to win would be naive. To expect to compete, I think, is realistic. Yeah, may the force be with you, T. John Lucas, specifically. Uh, everybody, let's go. When T. John makes a three, and I know I keep saying it, BYU hasn't lost a game. So hopefully T. John and a bunch I of other told guys. I him this stat, by the way. Oh, you did? Yes, after you, the game. You have passed that along. I did. I think that's such a fun stat. T. John makes a three. Hopefully a bunch of other guys, as I said, can knock down some big-time outside shots against Gonzaga to try and just make it weird. Let's talk about making it weird. Like, make it weird. Be make close. Weird. Be make within single digits with eight minutes to play and then put the pressure on the home team where it's like, Oh, this isn't supposed to be happening. Like we're supposed, to, we're supposed to win this game. You know, the only team that's really given Mark Few fits in the kennel the last like ten years, that much. It's BYU. BYU. It's BYU. They 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 are a little nervous sometimes, right? Uh, Dick Vitale, an hour ago, but I just saw it. A big battle in WCC, by the way. <laughs> BYU fourteen and three versus twelve and two six. Oh, <laughs> he's got. Uh, he did. <laughs> Go back the longest win streak at home, sixteen in a row, which is all hashtag awesome, baby. That's hilarious. Is it in all caps? Because it should it's be. It's not in all caps. It should it be. Should yeah, Dick Vitale is one guy that should tweet in all caps yes. at all times because that's how he speaks. He's a PT peer. Absolutely. Topic two. What's the bigger game this week? With all that said, at Gonzaga tonight, number two in the country, or at San Francisco? It's hard to overlook the number two in the country and the fact that if Gonzaga wins, they're going to be number one. It's the Zags. Like, BYU wants to win a conference championship. Mark Pope has made no bones about it. Before... BYU transitions to the Big 12. He said, we've got to figure out a way to win at least one of these West Coast Conference titles, whether in Vegas or in the regular season. It's never going to be the regular season. It's the tournament we're talking about, I think. So if you ask a BYU player, they'd probably say, well, because it's the next game. But, man, the championship goes through Gonzaga, so it's about Gonzaga. But we're looking at the big picture, and we're like, how can BYU realistically get the best seed in the NCAA tournament and position yes. themselves the nicely po- for... The point is to make the NCAA tournament yeah. and win. And that extended buy in Las Vegas, you got to finish as one of the top two teams in yeah. West Coast Conference play. Yeah. Oh, it's a great buy. So for yeah. me, that means probably at San Francisco. I agree. Be- because the reality is, if you beat Gonzaga, that is a massive moment, right? But you're not expected to do it. He was a 15-point dog. You know what San Francisco is? A newcomer to the, oh, we're in the NCAA tournament discussion? 
BYU's familiar with this last two years of being in. San Francisco's new kid on the block. Yet, that's a tough game at San Francisco because this is also a reality check of, like, how good are the Dons if they beat – in 2019-20, that, as good as that Yoli Childs, T.J. Haas, um, you know, team was, Jake Toulson and company, Colby Lee, they did not win that game. Yeah. It's a tough place to play. Todd Golden's got those guys playing really well. A quad one opportunity for BYU. Yep. yep where they are not a 15-point underdog. Mm-hmm. This is a quad one real opportunity to get a big-time win on your resume, take care of business. And I'm interested to hear what Jay Billis has to say about San Francisco. Yes, because I'm not a huge believer quite yet. Does he believe in San Francisco? Yeah. Is he buying into the fact that the West Coast Conference like the is city? a four-bid league? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ken Palm says San Francisco by one. It's essentially a toss-up game. I think game. that makes sense. It's a toss-up game. Let's see it. Yeah. BYU at San Francisco, to me, all things considered, feels like the bigger game, which is crazy it to is. say because you're facing number two Gonzaga and you're having dreams as a BYU basketball team of winning a league championship. It goes through Gonzaga. It's about in, San Francisco. In Vegas, in the regular season, you, Gonzaga gets it. Yeah. Our question of the day. They're going to win a 16-team tournament. What are your realistic expectations for BYU men's basketball at Gonzaga tonight? Let's go to Voice Mm. of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At jfloyd314 on Twitter says, past experience has indicated BYU can beat really good Gonzaga teams in Spokane. It's absolutely possible. In any case, Mm -hmm. my bold but not realistic or sorry but realistic prediction is BYU holds Gonzaga to under 75 points quick scan of their schedule that's happened twice <laughs> BYU does defend and rebound Tarleton State did it <laughs> what 64 55 I remember that was, that was a weird. weird game for Gonzaga and then uh, they beat Texas Tech by 14 but it was 69 55 there you go so okay. twice this is this Gonzaga team is not last year's Gonzaga team yeah. They're yeah. still uber talented. They're so good. I think last year was better, yeah. T.J. Haas, uh, coming up, T.J. Haas becomes the new poster boy for the Lakeland Magic. And as promised, ESPN insider, college basketball analyst Jay Billis on the call tonight. He will join us to discuss where BYU fits in the college basketball landscape. And uh, what does he expect tonight from the Cougars in Spokane? This is BYU Sports Nation. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU at number two Gonzaga tonight. Listen to the pregame, Cougar pregame live at 10 Eastern time. And then the game's at 11 Eastern on BYU Radio and the app. 
We are live in Studio View with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. This morning, we spoke with ESPN's Jay Billis, who is on the call tonight for BYU at Gonzaga. Why Jay gives BYU a shot at Gonzaga, the Cougars' eventual fit in the Big 12 Conference when that time comes, and how Jay is connected to Mark Pope through a former teacher. Here's that interview. Jay, as an East Coast guy, how do you get yourself ultimately ready for an 11 p.m. Eastern tip start at Gonzaga? Well, I'm a West Coast guy, actually. I grew up in Los Angeles, so even though I, I live East now, I still think of myself as a West Coast guy. So my, my clocks are always set to Pacific time, so that's no problem. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. That's no problem. Okay, obviously a big game for BYU trying to take down Gonzaga. Gonzaga could be the new number one if they win out this week with Baylor going down. He was a 14 and a half point dog. What are your kind of initial thoughts on this matchup? It should be easy for BYU. I mean, Gonzaga's only won 160 games in a row <laughs> in, uh, in McCarthy. So, you know, you talk about a layup for Mark Pope and the Cougars. I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, you could have an easier game. So, it, it, you know, chalk one up in the win column and, and move on to St. Mary's should be no problem at all. Jay, <laughs> let's say we wish, man. Yeah. Let's say Gonzaga does hold serve as the heavy favorite tonight against BYU. With Baylor losing, are the Zags again the clear number one, in your opinion, with a win over BYU? They may be number one. There's no clear number one this year. Uh, You could make an argument for four or five teams, uh, maybe more, as being the best team. You know, last year was a little bit extraordinary where you had an undefeated Gonzaga team uh, and then a, a Baylor team that would have been undefeated absent COVID. Now, COVID took away a game between Gonzaga and Baylor in December, I believe, in Indianapolis that got uh, canceled because of, of COVID issues. But, um, you know, you, you have to count yourselves as lucky to have a season like that where you have two teams that are so dominant. Uh, this year, we don't have that. And, and people can think that's good or bad. It's just it's, it, this year is more of what I would call a normal year where, you know, we don't have an undefeated team uh, in, into the middle of January. Um, heck, there wasn't an undefeated football team. So uh, how could we expect to have an undefeated basketball team? But Gonzaga is very, very good. They're not as good as they were last year, but they're still really good. But they're gettable. Um, I think you play well. They don't, they're not as great of a shooting team as they've been, uh, but they're still an unusually good passing and cutting team that I think they're shooting 62% on twos this year, which is is less than they did last year, but it still leads the nation. So they get a lot of layups out of their half-court offense. And that's really going to be a key for BYU is how much can they make Gonzaga play half-court ball rather than play in transition and be able to play against a defense that's not set or even play ahead of the defense if there's a turnover or a quick shot that leads to a run out. Yeah, Caleb Lunder was talking about that this week. He said, we got, you know, blitzed the first couple of minutes uh, last time. We got to get back in transition. So that means BYU might not hit the glass as much, which is uh, brings us to the front court conversation. Certainly if BYU has Gavin Baxter and Richard Harwood, you at least feel like, hey, maybe the Cougars can make some shots and play a little defense and, and hang in this thing. But when you're throwing a, a, you know, a talented but young freshman Fusini Traore out there from Mali against Chet Holmgren and Drew Timmy, that's certainly a tall order uh, for BYU's front court. It's difficult, but, you know, it, that's always a decision that, that any coach has to make is how many do you send to the offensive glass. And, you know, you can send one, you know, or two or your big guys and then try to get back. But one of the ways you, you can slow down a transition team is by pounding the offensive glass and making them stick around to make sure they don't give up second shots. Uh, so a lot of it's going to come down to the quality of shot that BYU is able to get. Uh, if you're taking a ton of threes, those, those make long rebounds and, and can lead to runouts. Um, and, and if you take quick shots uh, that, that aren't expected, those can lead to some runouts. But it, it's a different challenge to play. Like St. Mary's, you know, and that was a rock fight that BYU and St. Mary's played for your team. Uh, you know, the referees allowed it to be a hockey game. And then, and then you had, uh, you know, open shots being missed. And, and I think those two things are connected. But uh, say, as you guys know, St. Mary's plays a, a very deliberate style. They're a much slower, lower possession team. And, and Gonzaga is not that. I mean, they are gonna, they're going to push it. And so it's, it's going to be a, 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 a real challenge for like somebody like a, a Tiki Alley at Tiki played really, he might've had his best game against St. Mary. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he'll probably struggle a little bit more in a faster game where quicker decisions 
Um, you know, sometimes, especially for a freshman big guy, it's a lot easier to play in a slower game. And so it'll be a little bit more challenge for him. Um, but I, I'm not sure, honestly, that the challenge is, is just in the front court. You know, I think, you know, Gonzaga runs so much uh, uh, quality. It's almost like a European style offense or international offense. Uh, so you're going to be guarding different guys and different actions. Um, so it's not necessarily front court versus front court as much as it is, you know, you got to have five guys alert uh, to take away all the things that Gonzaga does. And, uh, and it, it, it can wear on you during the course of a game. And, you know, you make defensive mistakes, you give up layups. Those can be pretty deflating. ESPN college basketball insider and analyst Jay Billis is with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars off to a 14-3 and start. We've already talked about losing their two main big men in the front court. Jay, in your estimation, how has been able, or BYU rather been able to piece together a season where they've only lost three times in 17 games thus far? You know, they're, I think they're kind of a grinding team, and I don't mean that in any way other than they find ways to win. So they, they've won ugly at times. Uh, they've won making threes. I mean, Alex Barcelo is one of the best players in the country that probably doesn't get the credit for it. I mean, there, there's not, there aren't three or four guys that are in his class as a shooter, uh, and, and he makes uh, uh, not only threes, but he's got a good mid-range game, and he's a very creative uh, finisher around the basket, uh, going off, you know, his left leg, right leg, floater, runner. Um, you know, he's got a he's got a, a well-rounded game as a scorer, and he's seen every defense that, that can be thrown at a player. But he's got to be the guy. Um, you know, there are other guys on the BYU roster that can score. Uh, they've got guys that can score, but Barcelo, I think, has to become more aggressive, looking for his shot, and that'll help open some things. It, it's not that he has to score every time, but just being aggressive, looking for it. He's so unselfish. I think it goes against his nature to think shot first. But uh, but I actually think that would help their offense if if he would become even more. Uh, of a of a hunter of shots rather than than and, and you know and I'm not saying he's doing a bad job. The guy's averaging 17 points a game and shooting an ungodly percentage. He's a great player, but uh, a little more of a me first thought on offense. Um, I actually think could help uh, his teammates get some opportunities. What a novel concept in 2022. You're asking someone to be selfish. It's great. I love it. Um, okay, let's talk about the WCC. San Francisco has joined Gonzaga, BYU, and St. Mary's as a team that's trying to get, uh, you know, an, an at-large bid. It should Gonzaga, you know, win the league in, in Vegas. Um, do you feel like it's four-bid league right now? Lenardi feels pretty confident San Francisco's in at this point. Yeah, I think San Francisco's really good. You know, I had them. I, I haven't seen them in person this year. I had them last year against Virginia, and those guards are really good. I mean, Bouye and Shabazz are, are legit. Uh, and Todd Golden does a really good job with them. They're, they're believers. And uh, do I think they're as good as Gonzaga? No. Uh, but there's nobody else in the league that they cannot beat. And so with, uh, with Gonzaga, uh, you know, San Francisco, BYU, those are three tournament teams. And, uh, and I think St. Mary's uh, is a tournament team. You know, I saw them out in Vegas in the Maui Invitational. This sounds a little bit odd to say, but, um, you know, they, they, they played really well and had a great opportunity to beat Wisconsin. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think, I think there's, a, there's a very good chance you see those teams all in the NCAA tournament. But uh, the truth is, you know, the games that the, all those teams have against each other are the most important. Like, you don't want to drop a game against Pacific or Pepperdine. You know, it's not like you, you can't, you know, you, you can lose those games. I don't, I, you can lose one, but you can't lose very many. But the, the games you have against the top four in the league are going to determine uh, the tournament bids and, and, and how you play against Gonzaga. Like, you can't get blown out. You have to have, you have to play well in, in that game uh, because I think you'll get credit for playing well. Um, you know, look, nobody gets great credit for a loss, but, but how you play in those games against Gonzaga, I think will be, will be a factor. Jay, Mark Pope in his two years has BYU certainly pacing in the right direction. In 2020, had the tournament actually taken place, the Cougars were a projected six seed. BYU was an actual six seed last year that lost to a UCLA team that got hot and went to the Final Four. What are your impressions of Mark Pope as a coach and what he's doing at BYU now into season three? 
Well, I think Mark's an outstanding coach. You know, he's he started his career at Washington and wound up playing for Rick Pitino, Kentucky, on that historically great 96 NCAA championship team. And he actually played for uh, Rich Belcher in high school in Washington, uh, who was my my freshman English teacher and the guy <laughs> that I actually played for what? Uh, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, so we have that in common. Um, but I think he's doing a great job. And, uh, and as you guys know, you know, BYU isn't the easiest place to recruit to, but there are some, there are some really good advantages there. I mean, one of the, 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 it's an, both an advantage and a disadvantage because of the, the, the missions that players go on, you know, it's not like they can sit and work on their games while they're on missions, but when you get them back, you can have an older team. And, uh, and I think that's, that, that, that helps a little bit. You know, it's a give and take on it. There, there are pluses and minuses, but but the pluses are significant, and uh, and so I, I think they play a, a mature game as an older team. They've got a really old backcourt, and uh, and I, I you know, I, T. John Lucas, I watched at Milwaukee, and he's a really good player and one of the underrated passers and handlers in the country. Um, you know, so BYU is legit, and and you know, Mark does a great job with him. You know, he's got such a great demeanor. He's very positive. Um, it's not that he doesn't hold players accountable, but I think he shows that you don't have to be some screaming maniac to get guys to play for you and to play together. Uh, so that's kind of refreshing and he's fun. Um, you know, he, he doesn't take himself too seriously. I mean, <laughs> you know, some of these coaches act like they're the president of the United States. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but, <laughs> but he, uh, he has a pretty good sense of, of who he is and where he is. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. To your point about missions, one of the kind of unique rules there is, you know, you you could play basketball, but you can only play on half court. So, you know, return missionaries, they have no transition game, Jay. It's just all it's just all in the half court, probably three on three, you know what I'm saying? And it's really hard to play in short sleeves and a tie. <laughs> um, so that's something that the NCAA probably should step in on. Uh, that, that's probably an unnecessary restriction that yeah. sets the guys back a little bit. Uh, B- BYU athletes on missions need an NIL deal <laughs> with, like, suit companies, men's warehouse or something. Um, I did want to ask you if, if you felt like, you know, when you both were in your prime that you could take Mark Pope in the post. Do you feel like you could take him? I could foul him. Uh, I don't know if I could take him. Uh, I don't even remember what it was like to play. I'm so old now. Uh, you know, I love it when people say, well, when you played, um, you know, what did you do in these situations? I go, when I played, there was no three-point shot. And, uh, and I used to laugh when, when people would ask, well, what did you do for the Duke Carolina game? What did you guys do during the daytime? you know, to occupy your time for a nine o'clock game. I go, we didn't play nine o'clock games back then. It was never dark when we played. We played one o'clock Saturday games. You know, that, that's back when it was more college sports instead of the NBA. It's, it's totally different now. <laughs> Jay, BYU was a year and a half out from joining the Big 12, and we all know the gauntlet that basketball schedule will be for a team like BYU. So for the Cougars to be a tournament team as they transition into that loaded conference, What's the key? What do they need to do? What do they need to change as they make the move to the Big 12? You know, I think the only thing that that any team making that move has to do is continue to recruit uh, at a high level. And, you know, just for example, like uh, like Fus Traore is uh, is going to be a junior, I believe, by the time they make that move. And, and, you know, that's going to, he's going to be ready to play in that league by the time he gets there. It's not that he couldn't handle it now, but, but he'll be far more prepared. Um, so, you know, continuing to recruit big bodies, guys that can handle, uh, cause it's more of a pounding and it's not necessarily, you know, the top teams in the league. There's nobody in that league that BYU can't play with. I'm not suggesting that what I'm saying is, you know, and, and look, this is no disrespect to the West coast conference, but, you know, you got some breathers in that league and, and there, there are games that you play where you're not playing against, you know, these physical specimens. Um, every team in that, in the big 12, it, it has, has talent and has players and has big bodies and has big time athletes. And so even when you're playing a team that's at the bottom of the league, they, they can, they can physically hang and uh and make it difficult so you know it can wear you down if you don't have the 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 right body so you know recruiting is always an issue when you're in a power five league i'm sweating thinking about playing in the big 12 right now (laughs) you'll have a blast it'll be fun um you know obviously the road trips will be be different it'll be a lot different going to 
you know, West Virginia and Lawrence, Kansas, but, but you won't, you won't believe how good the arenas are. I mean, every game uh, is, uh, is loaded and, uh, and that, that's more fun. And, yeah. and again, I don't want to be disrespectful to any program, but you know, look, players, especially after they got out of college, uh, when they talk about their careers, they're not going to be saying, hey, remember that game we played against Pacific? And again, no disrespect, but, but it's true. You know, but, but every game they play in that league is going to be more important. And the truth is players want to play in important games. And the coaches may not like it because uh, you know, the more important games you play, the more chances you have to lose. But, uh, but there's a difference between, you know, like every game's important. I don't want to suggest that. But, but there's a difference between important and big. And that's the way I should should have probably phrased it is is the games in the Big 12 are going to be bigger and uh, and that's going to be more fun for everybody. I can't think of many scenarios where I'd trade Malibu for a place like Lubbock, but going to the Big 12. Yeah, now we do something that BYU is very excited about and uh, would do so. I grew up not far from Malibu and it's great. But Buddy Holly did not grow up in Malibu. He grew up in Lubbock. And, and Malibu does not have drive through liquor stores. There are, some, there are some real positives there that you guys, and I, and I realize I'm talking, I'm talking to people at BYU. Wrong here. audience. Uh, so the liquor, the liquor stores may not, may not uh, be as popular, but it's still a nice feature. Oh, Jay, uh, great to talk with you. I think my last question is, did you get an A in that freshman English class? I got A's in all my classes. Don't you realize who you're talking to? <laughs> I knew it. I shouldn't have asked. That's the story I'm going to tell. Nice. Whether it's true or not, I will leave it up to you. Fantastic. Jay, enjoy the call tonight. We look forward to listening to you uh, as BYU and Gonzaga face up for the first time in 2022. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Great being with you. Follow him at Jay Billis, and it is a worthy Twitter <laughs> follow. He's incredible. That was great. So fun. So insightful. Yeah. So witty. Uh, Got laced, his jabs in at the end. Laced with sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, as a sarcastic person, I appreciate some good sarcasm. So, yeah, and, and uh, you know, we 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 probably don't say it enough. Our producer Ben Bagley does an excellent job here, man. We got this Jay Billis. It's a great week. Oh, let's go, baby. This is, this is um, an A-list week. And and he didn't feel like BYU would perhaps be as overmatched as maybe I was kind of alluding to, especially in the front court. So no. we'll, we'll see how Foos and Atiki uh, play tonight. It's a, it's certainly a challenge. <laughs> Construed Timmy and Chet Holmgren and, yes. and Anton Watson. Then. BYU, as we discussed, they muddy the games up a lot. It just can get kind of slow and weird. Yeah, maybe defensively, BYU plays another great game. Let's go. Okay, coming up, West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez on navigating conference scheduling with COVID. Plus, have Jerem and Tyler Haas convinced me to join them in getting the Alex Barcelo steps shaved into the side of my head if BYU beats Gonzaga? Yeah, dude. Is he going to do it? Sports Nation. Let's talk Thinking about it. About it. Let's talk about it. We have two. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. When their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realize that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! 
So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> With the free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Women's hoops ranked 18th. What's the record? 13 and 1? 9 Eastern tonight, taking on St. Mary's. Big game. It's always a big game, right? When you're ranked, you got to bring it every night. Big game for Shaley Gonzalez, West Coast Conference Player of the Week, and the Cougs, and Co Player of the Year from last. Let's get those canceled games back on the schedule for BYU women's basketball. The more wins, the better, Jaron. The more dominance, the better for the committee to look at. I'm in on this team going to the Sweet 16 this year. Like, I, yes. I, we think they're super awesome. Go watch them play, man. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on the social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Now we whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Heather Haas and I are all in on shaving an Alex Barcelo step into our oh, hair yeah. if oh, yeah. BYU wins in the kennel tonight. I'm not doing the shave head thing. Stop. Spencer, are you in with us? I'm all in. Yeah, bro! All yeah! Let's go. Uh, let's, let's go. go. Beat the Zags. When we did that on a two shot, that didn't work. Sorry, uh, on a two box, that didn't work. So let's do it again so everyone can <laughs> see. It's hard to see. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. It's official. Good. Let's Good. go. Yeah, no further discussion necessary. <laughs> I don't care what it'll look like. It's worth it. It'll look awesome. It's worth it. 18th ranked BYU women's basketball hosting St. Mary's tonight. The Cougars average four double digit scores in every game this season. Yep. So, Jeremy, will that hold true tonight? Will BYU have four more double digit scores against the Gales? Yes, even though St. Mary's only gives up 64 a game. Yes, BYU's offense is too good. Too yes. many weapons, too many threes, too many just. BYU is awesome. I, I'm like, can you imagine if BYU lost Gustin and Hampson? That's what the men's team is dealing with. It's a real challenge. Yet they're thriving at 14 to three. And we think that they would probably be okay. They'd I, figure I, they, it they're out. that good. They'd figure they're it that out good. in some way. Yes, they're going to yeah. have four more double digit scores. That will happen. BYU's first in the Learfield Directors Cup standings following the fall season, which is just unbelievable. How big of a deal is this? I think this is a bigger deal, although it's not going to get the national notoriety that. Right. AP top 25 football rankings get or even sure. basketball rankings. Let's, let's call it the national champion. Ultimately, ultimately, Jeremy, if you are ranking the health of an athletic department and what they have actually accomplished through an entire athletic program, it's a huge deal. We should yeah. pay this way more credit than it probably gets love for through social media and those channels. Why was not headline one then? No, th this is amazing. I, I am so happy for the amazing fall teams. No pressure winter spring sports. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Somebody win some natties. Somebody go to the national championship hey, if BYU game. BYU men's and women's basketball win some games in advance of the NCAA tournament. You know. <laughs> they won't equal what cross country is talking I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the G League's Lakeland Magic are having a faith and family night. Hmm, those are on brand here. For an upcoming game. Oh, hey. And not TJ. surprisingly, their poster boy <laughs> is TJ Hawes. Of course. Jeremy, did they nail that branding? Yeah. Uh huh. Absolutely, they did. Yeah. And finally, TJ follows me on Instagram. Thanks, TJ. Took a sec. <laughs> I don't know if TJ follows me on Instagram. I'm gonna have to look. Oh, go check. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look. If he doesn't, then I win. Does he? Does he have a Twitter account? Does he? I think he does. Does he ever tweet though? I don't know about tweet. TJ, we got to get you on that. You can't be in your 20s and not have an IG. You just can't. Everyone has one. Go. Okay? Twitter is different. Hey, there's a mini basketball giveaway, too, for the Faith and Family Night. Let's not forget Oh, very that. nice. Okay. I think they're handing out uh, Book of Mormons, too. Coming up, <laughs> Spencer tries to make up some ground on me in our double down. Program. Yeah, it's a long road ahead. Plus, oh, plenty of games left. WCC Commissioner Gloria Navarro joins us to discuss the chaos of navigating a league with four projected tournament teams through another wave of COVID. This is BYU Sports Nation. We're going to look good with that step.
Professor of Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. I'm Kieran Stone, and I'm a contractor. We find communities in need and work with them to forge better futures. It's not about us. It's about us connecting with everybody there and helping the community and working with them. There are so many communities that need help. When you think you can't make a difference, you are making more of a difference than you could ever dream or ever imagine. They're all incredible projects to be a part of, and I'm so grateful to be a part of The Fixes. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest episode of BYU Sports Nation right now, Mark Pope tries to keep up with his team's vocabulary, and Seneca Knight teaches us how to make deep fried Oreos. No cap. Catch it all with Kiki Solano on the BYU SN Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B on a game night Thursday for BYU. The Cougars at Gonzaga. Top two teams in the conference facing off, according to Ken Pomeroy's index. Well, it's number one BYU versus uh, number two Gonzaga in the standings, And right? the top yeah, two teams yeah. in the WCC <laughs> standings, for that matter. Joining us now over Zoom is the commissioner of the West Coast Conference, the fabulous Gloria Navarez, who is working overtime and then some. Gloria, great to have you on the show. How are you today? Really good. Great to see you guys. Glad to see you and that you are doing healthy. Uh, how would you explain your job as the commissioner of the WCC, let's say, over the last couple of months? You know, I never thought we'd still be in dealing with COVID, what are we, two years later now. But, you know, the good thing is we know we can get through it. It's not fun. It's frustrating, and it gets a little hectic, especially when the first two weeks of conference season gets interrupted. But just like last year, our presidents, athletic directors are, are working together, and we're close to rescheduling pretty much every game we've lost and um, optimistic that we can catch our stride again and, and get through conference play with fewer interruptions now that most of our teams are probably in that 90-day window. What would have to happen to – go back to the Ken Pomeroy standings and or mix up the schedule? Well, you know, on the men's side, we have a 16-game um, uneven round robin. And on the women's side, we have a full 18-game double round robin. So if any team doesn't complete their normal schedule, we would default to Ken Palm if it impacted the seeding for our tournament, the final ranking of all our teams. Mm. You said that you have already put in place plans to reschedule most of the games, which is fantastic news. We love to hear it. Walk us through that process. When you find out, from the moment you find out that a team can't play, what then happens and how long after that are you typically discussing, okay, well, when can it happen again? Well, the when last year was pretty quick because as soon as you had a one positive case on a team, the whole team had to sit per county regulations in most places. Whereas this year was a little bit more nuanced because we're vaxxed, we're boosted, we, you know, the contract patient exposure, symptomatic. So even if one person got a positive, we weren't always sure if that meant the whole team had to sit. For example, in LA County, if you have three positives, the local requirements are that the whole pod team, in this case, has to sit because it's considered an outbreak. So, and over the Christmas break, we had flights canceled and students not being able to get back in time in order to get tested. So it was a lot more protracted and nuanced. But after that, you have 48 hours to work with the opponent school to try to reschedule something. If that can't be done between the schools, then it comes to my desk and I try to get involved and either find a date and time uh, to force the contest, or I have the authority to call it a no contest and take it off the schedule. Where do we stand with BYU at Portland from New Year's Day in that regard? I believe at this point, and again, I'd have to check with my team, everything is either in the process of being locked in or locked in, but I couldn't tell you exactly when it is. Glory, what does your calendar look like right now? <laughs> A hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully digital. <laughs> yeah, for right. real. Yes. The West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez is with us on BYU Sports Nation. 
Let's talk about the conference tournament in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. What type of contingencies are in place if, and heaven forbid, things get worse and trend in the wrong direction with COVID? Yeah, well, you know, we did it last year. We we went without fans, and we did we didn't do a true bubble, but we did contain and offer testing and a contained environment for the participants and the staff working the event. So we're prepared to do that again. But I'm optimistic that um, we'll we'll be in a normal configuration. And I do think, depending on what the local requirements are in Las Vegas at that time, it, it's looking like we'll have a tournament as close to normal as we can fantastic the west coast conference has produced a three bid league twice would have been three probably in 2020 had that tournament been held this year it's projected as a four bid league with san francisco doing some real work how uh elated is the the conference uh office right now that right in, as of now and hopefully it stays into march right that right now this is four bid league I, if the tournament were today, we'd have four teams in for sure. And and that is a culmination of all the great work of the athletic directors. Even before I, I took the position in non-conference scheduling, the structure of conference play, the structure of our tournament. And it's really been an all-in effort to grow the strength in basketball. And it's really good to see it's starting to reap some rewards. And I, I do think it's not a fluke. It's what we've listed as our goal it's what we've been working toward and you know we have a tremendous group of coaches and athletes that have really gotten it done even through these troubling times gloria you're in a very tricky position for several reasons and with four teams in play to make the ncaa tournament if and again we hate to see any games canceled but if some games are canceled would you then because you want four teams to get in the tournament feel pressured or forced to cater to those four teams to bolster their specific resumes? How would that work? So I have, when games come to my desk to decide whether I force them to be played or I can declare them non-contest, I have a series of criteria that sounds like, you know, um, impact on conference standing, impact on cost, missed class time, um, impact on our ability to get national rankings and, entrance or seating in the NCAA tournament. So every case is different, but to your point, I am uh, authorized to consider impact on postseason. And that is interesting because a game like Portland for BYU doesn't necessarily help the Cougars. It could only hurt should they lose. So you have some, uh, some fun criteria to walk through with that. I did want to ask you about uh, BYU's exit of the WCC coming up in 2023. What were the conversations like with Tom as BYU didn't leave immediately, but was going to give it not one, but two years of, of staying in the league. I thought that was a unique move. Yeah, and, you know, uh, President Worthen and Tom Homo have been fantastic because every time there's been conference realignment around football, BYU has been named in the mix, whether it's fact or rumor. And so we've always had really great communication. And when this one started bubbling up, you know, the chance for BYU to have their football program aligned with a Power 5 conference like the Big 12, you know, that's something you just – you can't deny and BYU has always been transparent about wanting to get there someday. So it, we had great communication. Um, I'm particularly thankful that they gave us two years because that gives us a little bit more breathing room, especially with all this COVID craziness to really evaluate where we're going to be, whether we replace BYU or whether we should expand, gave us a little bit more um, time to do that. But I, I can't tell you, I think, Everyone in the league agrees that the 10 years BYU has been with us, they've really fit, despite being a little bit different in size and scope and, than the rest of our schools, and they've really made us better. Where do you think that the BYU and West Coast Conference relationship have mutually benefited the most over now a decade plus? You know, when BYU came into the league – Obviously, they were strong in certain sports, but you, they weren't, you know, taking home the title in every single sport. And I really think they've pushed all of our teams across all the sports to get better. They're always in the top two, three, four in there. But, you know, Santa Clara women's soccer, Pepperdine tennis, Pepperdine golf, um, we, we still have this great depth and diversity at the top of our league. And I feel like BYU has helped push that even higher. And BYU has benefited a ton from being in the league. I'm not sure we, you know, the WCC was massively on our consciousness prior to 
uh, being in the league. But it has been an amazing experience, and I'm looking forward to another year after this one. Um, but BYU fans have enjoyed the WCC. Trust me, the fans have enjoyed the travel. We used to go to Laramie, Wyoming, Gloria. Uh, <laughs> we love Malibu. We love L.A. We love Spokane. You know, it's been awesome. Let's finish with this. BYU. There isn't a bad place to travel. No, at right, league, for no, sure. It's right? amazing. I've been able to hang out with my homies in the 503 in Portland. It's been great. Okay, let's finish with this. BYU at Gonzaga in men's basketball tonight. Certainly Gonzaga, an opportunity to become the new number one again. Uh, but big opportunity for BYU where they have won in the kennel before. So it should be a fun one tonight. Absolutely. And, you know, BYU's got a couple good games on the horizon here. They get St. Mary's and USF. I can't remember what order. Yep. Um, and I heard Baylor did lose. So this could be a chance to really bolster, you know, both the rankings, no matter the outcome for these two teams. Gloria, it's great to talk with you. We appreciate everything you've done for BYU and the West Coast Conference. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all the support of the league. Appreciate you both. Absolutely. Gloria Navarra is commissioner of the West Coast Conference with us on BYU Sports Nation. What an unbelievable job. She's got to navigate a lot right now. done navigating through this craziness. Right? And she's exactly right. Like, both have mutually benefited. That's the kind of relationship you want to get into, whether it's with people or business or whatever. Like, what BYU and the WCC have had has been amazing. And now BYU has this amazing opportunity to to advance its athletic program. Coming up, Double Down predictions for the Cougars tonight in Spokane. And a rise and shout out to a BYU coaching legend who is on the rise himself. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Stories have a way of framing some of the important conversations that we're already having and giving us the language that we sometimes have a hard time finding. The Appleseed is a show filled with stories for you and your family. Tall tales, fairy tales, folk tales, personal and family tales, all kinds of tales from all kinds of tellers. And we always hope that the stories that we bring you on a show spark memories for you that you can share with the people that you love. Describe what the well symbolizes in six words. When you're down, keep on wishing. That crazy well brings hope to the hopeless. Help others feel better. Wishes, Ireland, and mystery. Life changing. The well symbolizes hope. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or you can download the podcast, just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. What a show. It's not over yet. Time for our double down picks. Ball night, BYU at Gonzaga. Ball night! We make two picks. You get both right, you get a total of three points. Because there's that bonus point involved. All right, Jeremy, you're up 25-14 going into tonight's game. What are your picks? Number one, T. John Lucas will make two plus threes. Oh, snap. I, I think he makes a couple of threes, yeah. If T. John Lucas makes two threes and BYU hasn't lost when he makes a three, I like the vibes of that. Number two, BYU scores 70 plus. The Zags are giving up 64 a game. So I think you get into the 70s, you at least have a shot. But the thing is, Gonzaga scores so many. Scored 117 against Pepperdine Saturday. Yeah. Jeez. 
Can we channel the Tarleton State situation where Gonzaga Tarleton only State. scored 64? Tarleton State, 64-55. The Fighting Tarletons put up a real fight. <laughs> Did they do the Tarleton? <laughs> oh, boy. Now that's a dad joke. Yay! Fantastic. Yeah, I like the aggression, uh, especially on the T. John Lucas pick from you. I'm going to be aggressive, too. BYU will cover the Ken Palm spread and be within 12 oh, points. Within 12, meaning 11 or fewer? 12 or 12 or closer. <laughs> they'll push Ken Palm or yes. cover that? Okay. Yes. Got you. Yes, they'll be within 12. Okay, number two. BYU will hold Gonzaga to 80 or fewer points. <laughs> That's only happened twice. <sighs> but the Fighting Charlesons did it, you know? Like, it's totally, um, totally up for grabs. Oh. 80 or fewer. Let's hope for a lot of missed threes by Gonzaga and a weird off-night shooting in the kennel. Yeah. No, of course. BYU's defense can factor into that as well. BYU has one of the best three-point defenses in the country. Our question of the day. What are your realistic expectations for BYU at Gonzaga tonight? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Scotty Coog. Who cares about realistic, says Scotty Coog. Let's shock the world. Let's go. Listen, BYU's done that. It's done it before. I don't think BYU's been this overmatched in the front court before. That's not an indictment on Foose and Atiki. It's just a reality of not having your top two guys. Like, if Gonzaga didn't have Chet Holmgren and Drew Timmy, it would feel very different. How would right? Gonzaga That's feel? What, BYU has to muster something special. And whenever BYU's one up there, it's been something special, of course. Again, you don't have to play perfect. You just have to play better than Gonzaga tonight yes so let's go we yes. want steps in our head all right today's rise and shout outs presented by mountain america the official credit union of byu athletics let's start with dave rose who we have learned went through a really tough surgery but he is doing well he is getting better That's improving great. he's so tough that man is so incredible and in everything he's been through and he continues to face these health challenges like a champ i hope he's watching tonight the game. Let's go. Love uh, Robert Parker, who we talked about, the running back from the uh, 80s at the beginning of the show. Jay Billis, how funny was that? Like, how <laughs> drive through liquor stores? I did not know those existed as a, uh, you know, naive, non consumer. Yes. I-, I love his early take on it's going to be a layup for BYU and Spokane because the Zags <laughs> only won like 60 games in a row. Can you imagine? <laughs> Our thanks to today's guests, Jay Billis and Gloria Navarro. They were both fantastic. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. We're talking about basketball today, man. Against the Zags. Ball night, man. Yep. For Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Lincoln. Shout out to Nick Sanderson. We'll see you tonight for BYU Women's Basketball hosting St. Mary's. Wrap that game up. Another dub. And then watch BYU play at Gonzaga. Ball night. Go Cougs.